What's going on guys, Brian here. Today is Monday, July 29th, 2024. Now hopefully you've been able to watch each of these daily videos that I've been putting out. And more importantly, you've been able to learn something and then apply some of the information from the previous videos into the next trading day to capitalize off of the information and more importantly, make some sort of money for yourself. We're looking at a clean chart right now of the SPY 15 minute time frame with just a demand zone and a supply zone with information carried over from last week but I intend to layer some additional context on the market right now. We will take a look at some gamma exposure levels. We'll take a look at some advanced options volume levels. We'll take a look at some of my thoughts regarding the larger time frame, and as usual, some more nuanced elements of the market. But for the most part, I think this was a pretty cut and dry trade right here. Market gapped up, so the swing trade from last week ended up working out pretty well. The NASDAQ was up over 100 points to start the day. The, the MES was up over half a percent, so it was already a great start to the week. My thoughts regarding this area were shared in the most recent video, as well as why I took a swing trade over the weekend that ended up working out pretty well. This 547 level was addressed multiple times on Thursday and on Friday's recap video. So it's no surprise that the market came up to this level again and it struggled in this supply zone. If the markets can hold above this level, you guys already know it was addressed in the previous video. I'm targeting something up here. There is a gap on the chart up here. 5600 is a significant strike on the ES as we will take a look at the futures in a bit. Check out the previous video for a little bit more context regarding this demand zone here. Let's flip over to our gamma exposure levels. As you guys know, I like to start my week off with them. If you're not in Quant Trading App, these are the levels right now that I have marked off for my charts. They're coming straight from the Quant Trading App Advanced Gamma Exposure. It is the aggregates of all the expirations for, for this week. So from Monday to Friday of this week, link is in the description to my Gamma Exposure playlist, as well as the video in which I explain how I like to start off the week, what these levels might mean and how I trade using them. The market for the most part opened around the absolute gamma strike, so it's no surprise that it ended up being pretty choppy around this level as there was no major catalyst on the calendar for Monday. And then we have some larger earnings that are being reported starting after tomorrow's close. So we have AMD, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Apple. These should be on your radar. But for the most part, there's nothing that significant for today. So it is not a surprise with the type of price action we ended up getting around the absolute gamma strike. 42 and a half is a gamma strike that I have marked off here as I would expect the price to be pretty sticky around this area. As we can see that added some sort of an additional context, but for the most part, majority of the information we needed was right on our chart from the video that was released over the week or just taking a look at understanding basic supply and demand zones. To layer context on this chart, we do have the futures. So at the time, let's just maximize this. We have last week's POC. So as the market came down to this area, you guys can see this POC right here added some additional context. Being aware of these high volume nodes can help build confidence if you are looking for a long trade in that area. As last week's volume profile is pretty much set in stone, so there's no changes between looking at the volume profile right now as opposed to looking at it during the day because we're looking at the information from last week. So we have this POC, we have the demand zone that we can clearly see on the charts. So the volume profile is confirming it. We have price action confirming it. We have the gamma exposure confirming it. If we take a look at the uh, zero DTE quant trading app intraday script here, this is what it looked like for those of you that are familiar with the QTA levels. We did puncture the intraday zone. It did make me a little nervous. I actually participated in being long here, but because there was a lot of conflicting signs, I didn't just buy calls, I actually sold puts by way of a put credit spread just to give the trade a little bit more wiggle room. So this drop right here did make me a little bit nervous, but one of the ways in which I was prepared for that, and again, why I decided not to actually buy calls. In hindsight, I do wish I bought calls because I did not know we were going to get this straight shot up. This is the three minute time frame which we're looking at here. So it's just six minutes of selling right here, and then it was just off to the races. It would have been nice to be in some calls for the most part. I didn't like what I was seeing on the ADD. The ADD broke right below the zero line. So and then it just continued to trend lower. I didn't like that the VIX was also trending up, so that was a little alarming. However, the NASDAQ, let's maximize this here. This was in the same zone. These zones have not been updated as they've been shared on this YouTube channel. I don't remember how many videos ago by now, but at this point, if you don't have these zones and these points of controls marked off on your chart, I highly encourage you to mark these off on your chart. You should be very aware of the 20,000 level and its significance for the NASDAQ right now as well as the 19,000 level and the 19,100 level. This entire zone, these are coming straight from the volume profile. So right off of a glance, what do we have? Confluence right here. NASDAQ is in a high volume area from the volume profile. We have the ES is in last week's point of control right here. Last week's high volume nodes right around this area here. Check, check. We have the gamma exposure right here. Check. 
we have our demand zone. Let's just uh, switch back to it. This is this is just drawn out manually in our chart right here. But for the most part, you can just take a look at the price action and you can pretty much see it on the chart right here. Check, 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 check. This on the other hand, not so much. This on the other hand, not so much. So a little bit of conflicting signals from the VIX and the ADD. We can override the value of the VIX for now because of the week in which we're in. It is an FOMC week as well as the big tech earnings week. The VIX is more likely going to hold its levels on a week like this until the news comes out. So until after Wednesday, until after Thursday when Apple reports earnings. That's where the VIX will probably give us a better reading for the type of implied volatility in which it's pricing in. But for now, it's accounting for this week's earnings and the FOMC announcement. If we take a look at the tick for a second here, the tick was also extended at one point. So let's just pop this and zoom into today. This is early in the morning, which we sold off. It hit an extended strike. It hit the extended level of negative 1000 and and then this is our confluence level around here negative 900 so if we were to put this uh, side by side with this uh time frame right here so this is our 11:30. this is where the spy is here this is where the tick was at that point so the, so the tick was printing a little bit of an overextension the same time this was here same time this was here the same time we were coming out to this gamma level here the same time we were in the demand zone so a lot of good flashing signs we did breach the QTA intraday zone, so that made things a little bit dicey, but for the most part, we understood the overall context, and that's why we don't need to panic. Quantrain app members, we also have some additional confluences and an extra edge for ourselves. Here's our options volume level, but it is an extra tool available to QTA day traders. It is something that I do like to leave open because it provides some extra context. So as the market was coming down to this level, we knew what the option volume range was. So it is also not a surprise with the rejection that happened at 547. We would be aware of where we can likely get some sort of support as the market usually likes to trade within this previous day's volume range. And then even more importantly, we would have the SPX zero DTE trade engine. So as we come to here, this is where we were at the time as we came down to this level. So let's watch the tape back. So this is what I've been calling it for now. It's the SPX trade engine's tape. So this is just sending out this feed every five minutes here in the Quant Trading App Discord. I've just taken all of those images and I'm putting it into video format. So it makes it easy to play back. So the market opens. Things are pretty choppy hovering around this neutral strike. Neutral strike is pretty choppy, but then we start selling off. Our significant levels would be our one sigma close right here and the, the one expected move from the open. So this is coming from the options chain. So now at this point, the market has hit the one sigma close and we're coming close to the expected move from the open in this area here. This is adding our extra confluence for a reason if we're thinking we want to be long. The power strike is all the way up here. Absolute Gamma did take a drop down here to the 430 level, but it was hovering around 500. The power strike this early in the day is not that significant, but it is something to take note of. It's not really going to be that helpful for us. It would have been amazing if the power strike was also this level because then 450 would be extra confirmation for an even extra support level. But for the most part, the power strike was not below here. I'm just pointing out the information that a trader would be looking at at this point in time. Max Payne, this is the zero DT Max Payne. It is above us. So we do have Max Payne pointing up. We have the power strike pointing out, pointing up. We are at supports. Absolute Gamma is below, but it did just drop below, which means it was a recent change. So let's play it out and continue to see what happens. We get a bounce. Price goes a little bit lower. So now we've hit the expected move from the open and we immediately see a nice sharp bounce. So what happens from there, what we would expect is for price to go higher bouncing off of these levels. The overall positive GEX at that time was pretty low. So if we just skim back to here, the positive GEX at this time was only 35%. So that's pretty low. The QTA's proprietary strength meter was 35. This is 35 out of 100. So this is also pretty low. 70 is a really good number. Anything above 70 is, is pretty bullish. And then for positive gamma, we probably want to see over 50%. So these numbers right here are not very strong. So all these are reasons in which I didn't decide is why I would not buy calls in a situation like this. Again, I decided to sell puts because I wanted to give it a little bit more wiggle room in case we went lower and then maybe consolidated around here for a bit. And then maybe later in the afternoon, we moved up a little bit. But as I addressed earlier in this video, I do wish I just bought some calls as I ended up missing out on a lot more gains, even though I'm happy with the uh, put credit spread. You guys can see just playing this. I'm going to let that just run for a bit. I don't think there's anything else significant we can take away from the uh, trade engine here as the day's progressing. The levels are not really moving around that much. The power strike remained up here. The uh, absolute gamma was just jumping between 500 and 450. 
things are pretty choppy around on neutral strike. Again, it's to be expected on a day where there's no real major news. The market is going to wait for the catalyst later in the week. We know that there is this demand zone up here. We know that there is a supply zone up here. Price is stuck in between the two. So it's not a surprise it's going to play out that way. Next, let's take a look at the queues. So let's make this larger here. Let's see what we have on this chart here. This was also covered in the video, most recent video, one released over the weekend here. Just being aware of this trend line. So what do we have right here? NASDAQ extra confluence same zone right here on the nasdaq but we also have this trend that added to reasons to want to take a long trade off of that level pointing it out for those of you that might not have caught this this is the type of information you carry forward so this trend line see how price interacts with it tomorrow the two-day anchored view app was here the nasdaq did slice below it so that made things again a little bit dicey a little bit more concerning but, but this is where understanding context and knowing where you are on the charts or where price is in relation to these key zones the volume profile in the futures was telling a story. Hopefully you had your convictions from the previous videos. In hindsight, I would have liked to have maybe buy some calls as we reclaimed these levels. I sold puts again a little bit earlier in this and then held a little bit red. But I do wish I grabbed calls here if I were to leave a note for myself for what could I have done better. That's something I would recommend you do whenever you're journaling at the end of the day. If you took a trade, and even if it was a winning trade, you can always ask yourself, was there room for improvement? In this case here, the room for improvement for myself could have been to possibly add some calls maybe once we reclaimed the Quant Trading app intraday zone or once we got over to the Anchor VWAP. I was too busy assessing my risk for a potential swing trade. I guess we can kind of come around to the conclusion of this video and I'll just share some of uh, thoughts that I might have for the future. Yeah, this is uh, this is also just additional confluences. These levels, I don't know if I shared it on YouTube, so I just wanted to share it with you guys here. This was, uh, if we head to the SPX, additional levels that you probably would want to have on your charts. They were shared a while back, but that's our zone right here. It's coming pretty much straight from just looking at price action on the chart and marking off significant areas of interest. So we have this already marked off. Again, just another set of levels that I have not really changed. I love trading this way. I think it's a smart use of time. The same thing like these gamma exposure levels. These levels are going to coincide with some significant price action later in this week that's going to lead to potentially A plus trades, if not A plus trades, at least some sort of an A setup for us to be able to take advantage of. The gamma flip area is up here, so around 550. We can save even up to 52 and a half. So 50, 52 and a half. This whole area here is where the markets would like to probably return to. Above here is where the positive gamma starts returning to the gamma exposure profile. This is a positive gamma strike right now, but is the third highest. This is the area in which I would say the market would probably have a lot of pressure eased off. This is where I can imagine bulls would regain their confidence and that's why i'm targeting a little bit higher on the on the markets i'm willing to take the risk through the fomc it's a gamble at this point obviously because it's the fomc announcements we also have earnings so at this point i'm practically gambling but i'm going to take the risk to the upside here i'm in some calls for next week i think i could just show you guys um some of what the uh some of what my thoughts would be here as i shared the um, risk profile out so here we go so this is what I would be thinking we have the 5600 strike is pretty significant. This is why it's pretty significant here. It's a decent area of liquidity. I think if bulls can take control this week, I don't see it just stopping at 5600. I can imagine coming up to 650. So this is the calls in which I'm targeting on the ES. I'm trading the ES futures right now. I like the idea of trading the options after hours, especially around earnings, FOMC. If anything happens after hours, I would like the flexibility to be able to take profit. The same thing like this morning was able to take profit in the pre-market session on the swing from last week and then once the market opened didn't have the same amount of risk out so was able to trade with a little bit more of a level head regarding a risk to reward standpoint i think i was just trying to weigh you know the risk to reward if it's worth it i also have some nasdaq calls i think if the nasdaq was to really get going and recover obviously we have that twenty thousand level but but imagine if the nasdaq got back up to twenty thousand six hundred that would be insane. I have calls for around this area here. Just, just because since I went with next week, I wanted something a little bit more affordable. The 20,000 calls, I think, were a little too pricey. Imply volatility is higher than normal for this week, and that's one of the reasons why I don't really want to buy options for this week. It's just because the implied volatility is higher. I'd much rather sell options for this week. So if I'm bullish for this week, sell some puts for this week, buy some calls for next week. That's one way of having a structure in which you can be long. Obviously, if the direction does not end up working out, it's going 
want to be red, but that's the risk you take on whenever you're taking a directional trade. I am considering hedging with on Wednesday some zero DTE puts maybe down for this level depending on where price action is at or I might just trade the futures contracts flat out but for the most part my swing trades right now are in call options for the NASDAQ and the ES for next week and then I'm just trading the zero DTE day to day action as the information comes in. Let's take a look at the zero DT gamma exposure. So this is earlier in the day. Let's start from, this is 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. Okay, so this is 9.45 Eastern time. So 15 minutes after the market opens, this is where the SPX is at. What significant gamma strikes do we have on the chart? We have 490 right here. We can see that it is a negative Gex Island surrounded by a bunch of positive Gex. If price was to head up here, this level will probably act as some sort of resistance. If it was able to get above here, then we would expect this to be an area of resistance. So the five 500 strike. So the support side here, usually whenever a bunch of positive gamma meets a bunch of negative gamma, it's a pseudo gamma flip area. So you can expect the price to be pretty choppy and you, and you can expect that strike to act as some sort of support. But for the most part, the actual first bump in negative gamma is at 455 right here. So this is at this point in time, I would see this as this is our potential support. Price is probably choppy around here, potentially supports resistance here and that's i always start with what do i think is the closest support what do i think is the closest resistance and then you move further out from there so if this level breaks we have up here if this level breaks we have here and then if we are holding below here price is almost definitely going to go towards 430. we take that information let's apply it to our charts and we see i guess i'll actually just draw this out for you guys to see this pretty clearly for those of you that are new to this gamma exposure and trying to make sense of it here oh four 465 actually so right here so look at that from the gamma exposure level again we're evaluating what the gamma exposure looked like at this point in time and then seeing what can we learn from this so this is our 490 465 455 straight from the gamma exposure chain again 495 at 945 so 15 minutes after the market opens what are your significant levels all i did was just drew those out on my chart right now so you guys can see look at how price action interacts with it Guys, putting the time in and just at the start of the day, looking at the gamma exposure profile, plotting three, four lines on your chart, and then going back at the end of the day and seeing how price interacted with your levels, I promise you, you will get better at trading with gamma exposure. It's what I did. It's how I was able to spot and anticipate it will help you be able to anticipate what you think will happen with price around certain key levels and being able to visualize it before it happens will lead to better trading performance. So that's why I'm just including it in these videos here. For those of you that may be a little lost and confused regarding gamma exposure, it's as simple as that. Significant strike right here, significant strike right here. Here's an interesting area. All this green turns to red. So this is an area right here. This is an area right here. This is an area right here. Just three levels on the chart. If price breaks above this, then I would expect something here. If price breaks below this one, then I would expect something here. And then lastly, something here. Obviously, if we get below this level here, we're in a completely different territory, but that's where you can come back and then see what other key levels are here. And some of this was covered in the previous video. Circling back to how we start this video, it starts off very simple, supply and demand zones. And you layer your context, you build upon that. But at the end of the day, a clean chart with some price action, with understanding the overall context of what the market is doing with supply and demand zones can go a really long way. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, leave a comment down below, and I will try to keep these frequent uploads coming. It was awesome to see that one of you guys in the Quant Trading app public chat posted that you swung the NASDAQ with me last week here, and you ended up having a really nice start to the week. It's pretty awesome to see. If you guys are capitalizing off of some of this information, please share. It's cool to see the other traders, how you guys are using the information here. This is awesome, obviously. The exact dollar amount is different for everyone. $3,000 might be a lot for someone, for someone else that might not be a lot. So that's why the dollar amount is not what's important because each individual trader has a different account size. Everyone lives in different places in the world. Everyone has different trading requirements and objectives. What's more important, especially if you're a beginner, is that you're understanding what's happening and you're learning and you're practicing good risk management with a plan. You know, hey, I'm buying here. I'm going to stop out if price comes below here. I know I want to take profit here. If we hold above here, I'm then going to target the next level up here or wherever that next area might be as, as every day is going to be different. We get new information from the market every single day, but for the most part, it's more important to understand and have a plan and be smart and safe with your money. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.